All right, hey there, fellow coder. Welcome to this next lesson in our series where we are building a real world web app from scratch, leveraging React on the front end, Spring Boot via Java on the back end, and tying it all together with MySQL. Uh, this is uh, part five of our little mini series um, as part of a much larger series, um, where in this one, we're going to be continuing our saga of deploying this application uh, to the open internet. Um, in this one, we are specifically going to be deploying it to a cloud server and uh, I will show you all the steps necessary to make that happen. So if that sounds like it's of interest to you, stick around. All right, fellow coder, let's dive into it. So first, a little background um, is that we have already um, Dockerized our app. So we've Dockerized the front end, the back end, and we have a web server. Um, and we've been able to combine all those things into a Docker Compose up command. Um, so we're good. We can run it on our local machine and it works. I'm just thinking now, did we do the web server? Uh, full disclosure, I recorded this video and another one in full. It was like an hour of content and then realized my settings were wrong and nothing actually got recorded. So I had to throw it all away. So now I'm confused as to what we actually did in the last lesson. In any case, um, we had uh, the app up and running. I don't think we actually had a web server. We were just using the development server. So uh, the dev server built into React, but we will, you know, for foreshadowing the future, uh, create a web server and, and run that as well, um, which is probably what we're going to do actually in this video. So uh, I'll talk more about that in a moment. So what's next? Well, we need to actually have access to a computer that's running and, and available on the open internet um, so that when someone visits that computer via the IP address tied to that computer, uh, it will actually run our application. We've been doing that with our local host. So our local host is the computer. Well, it actually is a computer. Um, it's our laptops or desktop or whatever it is that you're coding on. Uh, we call that the host machine. Um, the host machine is running the app and it's running on local host in your own little local network. In other words, on your Wi-Fi network or whatever. Um, but really we want to translate that to the internet. We want it to run not on our local Wi-Fi network, but on the global internet. Um, so how do you do that? Well, this can be accomplished using cloud servers. That's the fancy term that we use. Um, is a cloud server, which is just someone else's computer that's hooked up to the internet. Computer. Um, so AWS, Google Cloud, DigitalOcean, there's tons of these kinds of providers. Um, for our project, I'm, I'm leveraging DigitalOcean because I've done, I did a bunch of research before I started recording this little mini series where we Dockerize and, and are deploying the app. Um, and I just found DigitalOcean to be the least complex so it's the greatest place to start uh, plus it works i mean it's it's not bad for actual production use uh, either um anytime you're using anything in production meaning live on the internet with you know thousands of users using it it's going to get expensive but if you're leveraging this as a test as a little educational purposes only thing um digital ocean is simple um but not free AWS is free for the first year, but they rope you in with that. You think, oh, a whole year for free, and then you use it for free, and then guess what? Your your one year uh, renewal time comes up, and then you start to get charged like 20, 30, 40 bucks a month, um, and then you're hooked. You're using it anyway, which is why DigitalOcean, you can get started for like five or 10 bucks a month, and then you can tear it down when you're done. Anyway, um, I say it's relatively inexpensive to run, obviously five or $10 a month, um, you know, in North America is not that expensive in other countries might be expensive. So obviously your mild mileage will vary there. In any case, you will get the gist. If you live somewhere where you can't afford five or $10 a month, um, then you could, you could apply this exact same learning to AWS because ultimately at the end of the day, um, we're, you're doing the same thing. You're going to boot up a Linux box computer and do all these same commands on that computer. So um, it's really not that different uh, in, when you use another service. So anyway, having said that, let's get out of here and let's flip over to DigitalOcean. So DigitalOcean.com, let me just close all these other things that I have open because like I said, I've already recorded two of these videos. Oh, anyway, hey, I don't mind doing these. I, I do it again, that's cool. I do it for you guys. Show me the love. If you love the fact that I'm reshooting these videos, but still complaining about it, give me a like below uh, and subscribe. That would be really mu very much appreciated. So you go to digitalocean.com and you can sign up for it. Uh, the sign up process is very simple. Um, I've already signed up. So um, I did it with Google. So I actually signed up with Google. So I'm gonna log in using my Google account, um, which is right here. So I'm gonna say sign up with Google <clears throat> and I'm gonna leverage my coders campus 
account. For some reason, my my nose is running today. I just had a bunch of sneezes. It's almost like spring is coming here, and uh, my allergies are starting to kick in. Uh, allergies. Okay, so when you first log in, you won't see this screen. This is already up and running. I actually actually already have a version of this app running on assignments.coderscampus.com. This is what I'd done weeks ago, um, and this is the current instance of it. Obviously, this is going to look different. You know, probably by the time you're watching this, it's going to look different. But um, yeah, it's already up and running, and I've already done all this. And it's on a domain, and it's secured. See, it's the SSL connection. Um, it's really cool. I love this stuff. Anyway. That's not what you're going to see. You probably need to go to create droplets or you're going to have a screen where you can create a droplet somehow. Their uh, droplet, that word just means cloud server. Okay. That's their fancy marketing term for a cloud server, right? Again, a computer that lives on the internet that someone else owns that you're renting. That's all that means. So let's create a droplet. And for this, you have a whole bunch of options, which can be a bit overwhelming for what kind of droplet should I create? What kind of cloud server should I create? Um, I You could get started with a, a simple, uh, uh, was it Ubuntu or Ubuntu? I'll call it Ubuntu. If that's wrong, I apologize. I'm not a Linux person. I'm, a, I'm more of a Windows guy, but anyway, don't hold that against me. So um, uh, with the Ubuntu instance, uh, that could work, but with just a plain old Ubuntu instance, I don't believe this one comes with Docker. So you'd have to install Docker yourself. Um, I'm just a little lazy. So I go to their marketplace and uh, there's one right here recommended for you. If it's not recommended for you, if you don't see this here, you can just search for it with Docker. Um, but this one's Docker. It, this just means it has Docker installed already based on the Ubuntu instance. So I'm lazy. I click on that one and I use that one. So that's my uh, image that I'm working off of. And then you could choose your plan. So, um, what I've, what I've seen, um, from my testing is that you can go to the regular, uh, we don't need the fast SSD, at least not the, I don't believe we need fast SSD. Um, anyway, I just go to the regular instance. I would love to do the $5 a month one, but it seems like with our, th our we're going to have three containers um, running. Uh, we need more memory. So th no, there's only one gigabyte of memory on this one. This one has two gigabytes of memory. So um, we don't necessarily need the more disk, uh, more of the disk space or transfer, um, but we just need more RAM. So there is no option cheaper than 10 bucks a month to get access to two gigabytes of RAM that I saw. So that's the one that I choose and go forward with. Then you can choose its location. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, uh, you can choose whichever look, wherever your app, wherever the user base for your app is going to be using it the most, uh, you try to pick, I guess, a data center closest to where your um, students are going to, or I say students, your users are going to use your app. Uh, for me, my students are literally all around the world who are going to be using this. So there's no exact perfect choice for me. Um, I try to say East Coast because at least East Coast, you know, East to West Coast in, in North America, you know, that's close enough for them. And then people in Europe and whatnot, at least the East Coast is somewhat close to them. So I just do a New York server myself. So I choose New York. Um, and then down here, you can set up an SSH key. Uh, for you, you'll probably have to set up a new one. If you click on new SSH key, it gives you uh, a little um, uh, breakdown on how to do this. So you'd copy this to your uh, command prompt. So you'd go to your, I use git bash, whatever your bash screen is. Um, and you could copy these commands to generate the key. Um, you set a password on this key file that you're gonna create. And then um, you can add it right here. So you copy the contents of the key that's created. Um, whatever you call your key, it'll be called whatever it is that you call it dot pub. Um, and you can copy the contents of this file. It's just like a text file. Um, copy it into here, give it a name and say, add the SSH key that gets generated. So once you've done that, then it'll appear here in this list. Okay. So what I do is I just pick the one that I have already set up, which is called do key, do key, which is, that's funny. I never thought of that do key. <laughs> Oh dear. My dookie. Um, that's a, anyway, it doesn't matter. So, uh, the, the dookie is that's making me laugh. Um, not, not rehearsed, ladies and gentlemen, I make myself laugh. Look at this. It's okay. So DO just stands for di digital ocean, uh, key. So my dookie also, <laughs> Oh, I need to take a sip. Focus yourself. We're trying to be professional here, people. Um, I set I set up my SSH key here, and then uh, so I choose that one. So now that is the key that I'm going to use to log into this instance, and I'll show you how to log in in just a moment. What's important is don't lose that file, don't lose your two key, <laughs> and um, remember the password that you set on it. Right. So it has to be a password that you don't you're not going to forget because otherwise you're going to have some trouble logging in. Um, 
cool. So all this other stuff, I don't need IPv6. I, I don't think so. I don't care about monitoring. I, all this, you know, it says free. Is it really free? I don't know. Event, is it free now, but not later? Um, maybe it's always free. I don't know. Uh, I haven't actually looked at all this stuff. There's probably some, you know, uh, things that you could do here that might be of interest to you. Um, but for now, I will just say uh, go and uh, create this droplet. Ooh, but I want to do a different project. Shoot. I should have created a new project first. Um, I don't necessarily, I guess I could put it in whatever I'll create. I'll put it in this assignment submission app project. Uh, this was like my, uh, my, my one that I had done already. That's sort of running and that I'm going to leverage as sort of my, you know, real world running app. But anyway, whatever. So that's this guy right here. So if you go to this, uh, this address here, this is the one that's already running. If I copy the IP address, 206.189, you see it redirects to assignments.coderscampus.com, which is the one I showed you earlier. Um, this guy up here is booting up. So there's two droplets. Um, one droplet's already running. You can ignore that one. That one is the one that I did many weeks ago. Um, that's running on assignments.coderscampus.com. This guy is the one that's booting up right now. So as you can see by this blue bar, you need to wait for it to complete its you know, uh, boot up sequence. So we don't know the IP address yet. We don't know anything about it yet. We just need to be patient and wait. And that is the name of the game when it comes to deploying stuff is you often need to have some patience and just waiting a little bit often will, you know, solve the problem. So I'll pause the video and come back when this is all done being, uh, booted up. Oh, all right. So that took about another, maybe 20 seconds. Uh, and now it's up and running. Um, so what you want to do is you want to copy uh, copy the key or copy the key copy the uh, URL um, IP address of the of your instance um, and then you go to your uh, Bash shell and you want to do an SSH into it. How do you SSH? You need two things. You need a user which is called a root for this one. The root user is the one that's by, created by default, um, and then you have your IP address. If you try to do that. Um, it might work if you have not enabled the SSH uh, functionality that we talked about earlier. Um, then you're just using a password and that's it. That's a little bit insecure to just have a password blocking it because then if someone has your password, they're in. With our previous setup, we have an SSH key that we have created ourselves. So to leverage that SSH, SSH key, um, you have to use the dash I uh, flag to say I'm using an SSH key that I've generated, and then you point it to where that key is, which is in your .ssh uh, folder on your in your home directory. Um, and then ours was called Dookie, so we can leverage our Dookie. I'm gonna have fun saying that. Um, so boom, there you go. So now when we hit enter, it's going to hopefully work, and it's gonna say, hey, the, authentic the authenticity of this host can't be established. There's this it's saying, are you sure you want to connect to this thing? Do you know what this server is? Is this a trusted server? Yes, this is our server. Um, but now we need our Dookie password. <laughs> oh, it's not going to get old. So you need to type in the password that you created. This is a password I had created. I just typed it in. You've created a password to go along with your uh, DigitalOcean key. Hit enter, and then hopefully it lets us in. Note, I waited a little bit of time there as I was talking um, you, it might not connect right away, right? You might need to give it some time. Again, patience. If it doesn't work the first time when you try to SSH into it and you're getting weird errors, wait five minutes, okay? That's the name of the game there. You wait a couple minutes, see what happens. If it's still failing, then yeah, maybe something's wrong. Okay, so look, we now have root access inside of our uh, Ubuntu Docker instance, and we can prove that by saying Docker version. Ta-da! So we're using Docker version 20 as promised by our... Um, yeah, what you call it, droplet, marketplace, image, or whatever you want to call it that we had selected. So we have Docker here. Wonderful. Do we have Git? I forget. I think we do have Git. Yeah, Git is installed as well. So what do we do with Git? Well, we want to go and pull all of our files from our repository. Now, I might have pushed changes to this. What was the last time I pushed changes to our assignment submission? 18 hours ago, which was yesterday, which you can see changes for video 47, which is part four. Oh, and I'm doing part five. So we might be okay. I guess I didn't push any of my changes. So I think we're good. So this is part four, uh, which is the last video in this series. Um, and part five is this one. Yeah, okay, we should be good then. Uh, well, let me just see, Did, is there any part fives in here? There's no part fives, right? There's, there's a typo I fixed. 
17 hours ago. Okay, we might be okay. So with that, uh, sorry, I just, so you go to code and I copied the, uh, the HTTPS, um, uh, what you call it, URL for our code. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a git clone to clone this bad boy onto our computer, ta-da, our, our uh, instance. So now if I do an ls to list the directories, now we have assignment submission app, which is all of our source code. So our source code exists right here. I'm gonna remove the docker compose that has the underscore because we don't need to use that. So now let me do a cat on Docker Compose, which will just list out the contents of Docker Compose. Um, yes, yeah, so we have the MySQL container and we got that up and running the front end. Okay, cool. So this is what I think I expected to see um, because there's no server in here. There's no web server. Cool. So we're in a good, we're in a good place. So if we were to do, I forget now where I need to take this. Um, if we do a Docker Compose up, there's gonna be a failure because what we don't have here is the um, the MVN uh, W files, the Maven wrapper files. Um, I can't, I'm, I might be ignoring those and that's, I, I might've put them in the ignore, which is why they're not coming along here. Um, but in any case, let me just show you, right? So I'll do Docker Compose, <coughs> excuse me, up. <coughs> and you'll see that there is an error when it tries to get things up and running. I'll pause the video and let this do its thing until we hit that error. All right, so as expected, um, we had the error which it says, hey, the backend service, which is just our Java app, failed to build because the copy failed. Um, it tried to copy the uh, MVN stuff right here, this command copy MVNW, which is the Maven wrapper file, to from the host. And remember the host now, host is now equal to the droplet, the digital ocean droplet. So it's no longer our laptop, the host is now the digital ocean droplet. So it tried to copy the wrapper file file from the droplet to our container and it didn't work because it doesn't exist. Um, so we need to generate that, that file, that Maven wrapper file. So in order to do that, there's a, uh, an MVN, um, command that we can run, oops, that we can run inside of our, uh, back end, um, like so. So CD into it and we run MVN this. Now there's gonna be a problem. I've done this already. Um, Maven, MVN doesn't exist on this computer. So, um, uh-oh, what do we do? 